So let's go into coming up in, in version 40. The big effect or the big change this time, and hopefully Gil will get around to doing a video very shortly, is Gil's introduced a, a new model, um, which is this one here, which um, is unlike any other model that we've got. It's meant to represent uh, a moving headlight. Um, this is it um, in the top down view. So this is the body of the light. This is meant to be the light that's uh, emitting from it. Um, this piece in the middle shows you how um, vertical the light is here. It's right at the end. So the light's horizontal and the light's going out. Um, as the light sort of rotates upwards, this black dot would move towards the center and then eventually over to the other side. Um, but there's also other views that he's added. So he has one from the side. Um, he has a bars view and, and I'll show you that one later as well. Um, and he's got ones that show both the bars, which will show you all the DMX settings on your light fitting, um, as well as the bars. So let's do that. Um, so for those of you, I don't know if anyone on the, um, on the call actually has any of these, um, but as you probably know, they've all got very different layouts um, and uh, not everything has, not all lights have the same thing. So you have to go in and configure them and say which channel, um, which channel has uh, the various settings. So here I've set it to one and two, one will be pan. Um, and two will be tilt. So pan will control how far rotated it is and tilt contains how, how vertical it is. Um, you also get to control how far it turns in a full turn. This one set to 540, but you can set it to 360 degrees if you wanted to. Um, and obviously it's 180 of rotation. Sorry, that should tilt degrees of rotation. So that's how far it tilts over. Obviously, it would be unusual to be more than 180 degrees. Um, and then, of course, you can set the red, green, and blue channels. Um, and what we'll do is we'll set this one up. Damn it. We'll set this one up the same way. So the pan channel will set it as one. Um, the tilt channel will set as two, the red channel will set as three, green channel four, blue channel five. Uh, we'll set that to 360 as well, otherwise it's going to look a bit odd. Um, and what we will do is we will throw both of them onto channel 3000 so that they'll actually be like we're showing Oh, sorry, 3000. Like we're showing uh, both a, a top down view and a sideways view of exactly the same fixture. So they're both on channel 3000, or they both start on channel 3000. Uh, so oh, we'll save that. Uh, we'll go and we'll create a, an animation sequence, which is done. Um, and we'll add those two things into our sequence. Uh, we'll add them, DMX1, DMX. Okay. So there they are showing up on my, uh, my thing. I go and drop a DMX on it. Now I only need to drop it on one because remember I've, mul I've, I've uh, mapped these to the same channels. Um, and down here I can go and do the play with the value curve. So as I slide this along, of course, it spins around and it does 360 degrees. Channel two, of course, will cause that middle circle to flip over as the light flips over. And as it passes the center, of course, the light shows up on the other side as you would expect it to. Um, channel three, of course, is gonna play with the color. Um, but there's another way that we can deal with that if we throw I think color wash was one that he added, yeah. So you can only kind of see it there. Um, if you look very closely there, you'll see that the color, let's get rid of white, because white's a little bit hard to see. Uh, maybe you can see in the middle here how the color of the light is changing and the color bars here, of course, um, show it go through the colors according to the color wash. 
Um, I believe he's also set up the on effect. I'm not sure how many others he's planning to set up to work just like this by default. Um, if we come back to the DMX effect, of course, uh, one of the powers of the values curves is we can go in and we can choose um, a sine wave, we'll, we'll amp up a few cycles, and now it'll swing backwards and forwards. Um, and we can do a similar thing uh, with the tilt. Let's do a ramp on the tilt. So it will flip over once and you can see the circle moves towards the middle and then it flips over. Right, and down here you can see I've mapped both of these to the same channel. So um, uh, let me drag this over and expand it out a little bit. Maybe you can see it a little bit better. So here you can see, uh, because they're mapped to the same channels, although I've only, I've sequenced the color on one and the DMX on the other, uh, it actually affects the same one. Uh, so if I click up here and go back and play it, uh, why is that not working? All right, let's add a layer. This might crash. No, it doesn't. Good. Oops. Not sure why I'm not getting the colour showing up. Like I On should. the DMX1, Keith, the blue channel was set to zero. It looked like it didn't take when you typed in five. Oh, is that right? Uh, okay, let's go back. Layout. On, uh, on this. Well, actually, it's on both on this one now. Uh, so, oh, you're right, it didn't. Uh, so I've got one, two, three, four, and five. Um, and you're right. Okay, so I've got one, two, three, four, five. So they should all be there. Save that. Go back here. Yeah, not exactly sure why it's not showing the colour. I'm sure Gil will be able to tell me why that's happening. Uh, but you did see the colour working down here. You can see the colour here showing up as uh, red, green, blue as it goes through. So this will be pretty cool for those people that have those lights. Everyone's obviously seen uh, the Star Wars sequence with all the lights on the roof, etc. Um, you'll be able to do these on your sequences and uh, and watch them in your preview. So it should be pretty cool. All right. So let's go on. There's a couple of other things in release. Sorry, a few chats going on. Let me have a quick look. Anything important? It's been... Uh, well, Alec, like I say, you've got to send me your, your crash reports, otherwise I can't help you. Uh, you could, yes, you can use it for any DMX. It, it, really, Gil's optimised it so far for uh, for the lights, but obviously the DMX controls always supported any sort of DMX element. Um, if you're using those other DMX elements, um, then choosing the visualisation, which is just the box so that you can see the colours and the other things, might be the best way to visualise those things rather than dropping. Historically, people used to put a single line model down and, and map each, um, each individual bulb to a set of channels and it was very hard to see what was going on. At least by dropping one of these bars, things on, you'll be able to see each channel change. Um, and the colours change, etc. So you'll have at least some visualisation, even if it's for a smoke machine. All right, so, uh, so some of the other things, um, uh, adding N channel to the model export. So I showed you the model export last week. Um, I was surprised that I'd left out the N channel, so I've added that back in. Um, I've added this week um, logging of really slow frames which rendered so this is a sample sequence that I was working with someone on um, and they were experiencing extremely long render times it was taking like 7,000 seconds to render their sequence um, and it turns out that they had a very large model here it was set at 800 by 450 and they were rendering the fan of snow uh, which one of the, uh, the render on model can't remember. 
oh, the plasma. So they're, re they're rendering the plasma effect on it. Um, and the plasma effect is really struggling with a model that that's large. And so it's uh, slow. And so it helps us at least do some troubleshooting when someone says they're having problems with the rendering time, be able to tell them exactly which effect or which model's causing them problems. Um, in that case, that person could quite easily lower the resolution on their model. And if they really needed it high, they could leave it to the last minute when they were generating their FS EQ file and just make it high then and deal with the long render times and not have to put up with them all the way through their sequencing. Um, so yeah, I'll, go, I'll ignore the bugs, they're not that interesting. Uh, at a view log, um, we often talk to people about having a look at their log files. So we've now added a tools view log, which uh, opens the log file up and shows it in whatever your default text editor is on your platform. Um, so if we ask you to have a look in your log, you won't have to go fishing around to find out exactly which directory it's in. Um, you can just access it directly um, from uh, Xlides. Um, Oh, okay, so this, this was a bug. We were getting a bug. Someone put a video effect and created a, um, a model. If you remember last week, we talked about these render styles and this single line. Well, someone had taken their matrix, turned it into a single line, and then tried to render a video effect on it, and it was crashing. Um, so now the video effect will render a red background if it has a problem rendering the video. It won't tell you exactly why it had a problem, unless you look in the log file, it'll tell you in there. Uh, value curve on sparkles. So now the sparkles element up here, which is the number of sort of white flashing lights in the background that you get, you can set a value curve so you can change that over the duration of the effect. Um, presets. So last week we talked about presets. Um, one of the things I found surprising about presets was that um, it was actually hard to, to use them. Um, uh, edit display elements, add my matrix, I'll throw some layers in it. All right, so we, we did resets last week. Presets, sorry. Um, I don't have any presets here, but what I can do is I can import some presets. Um, now, where did I put them? Oh, I know where it is. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Uh, it's one of those sequencing assets I load, uploaded. So here's a Merry Christmas Snow preset. So it's imported it. So if I expand it, it's now here. And I can apply it to my matrix. And I'll close these things down. And now you can have my Merry Christmas with three different colors, letters, and the snow falling and accumulating. Um, so if you go onto that repository, you can download that preset and you can go and play with it and do whatever you want to do with it. Um, but so now you can bring in individual presets, you can export individual presets. In the past, you could import presets, but someone had to share you their RGB effects file and you could only import the whole thing. You couldn't choose um, to just export one or two effects. So that'll be new in version 40. Um, some more crashes. Uh, model face and state data to the X model files. Um, so we showed the other week how you could import uh, X model files. Uh, so these, when you click on the import here and you drag and drop it, um, it pops up and lets you import. Um, a model. Um, in the past it would bring in the model and it would look all really cool but when you came down here to look at the face data um, it would be blank. Um, but now that face data comes in with the import. So if someone's gone to the trouble of defining the face and all the channels and which channel should be associated with, with which, which of course may not be the same for yours, you can always go and change it. But if you happen to have set it up in the standard way for that particular model, then you won't have to go to all the trouble of defining um, the face data to, to drive that model. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, um, and then there's 
Gil stuff. Uh, so Gil's stuff this time has been all about his DMX effect. So colours and um, yeah, so it's all all about adding the DMX effect and adding that colour support using the on and the colour wash, uh, which I've shown you. So I think that is all I wanted to cover there. Um, one other thing I did want to show you that I'd actually forgotten um, when we, I'm not sure how to grab these things. Oh, there we go. Uh, so one of the things I didn't show you is if you've got two models like this um, and you want to align them, so they're actually meant to be um, uh, aligned, uh, you can hold the control key down, choose, oops, sorry, hold the shift key down. Now I'm going to find where that click point is. Okay, we'll go back and we'll hold the shift key down. We'll click on the other model. Uh, where is it? Damn it, I'll stuff it. I'll do this one up here. <laughs> um, hang on. No, that's why it's the control key. So you hold the control key down, you get all the three models. I didn't show you this, but if you right click on it, it does have an align, and so I can align them up to the bottom. Um, it does have some other attributes there, um, but the align ones all work. Um, the distribute ones I'm pretty sure don't work, or last time I looked they don't work. Um, but yeah, um, they align to whichever one you choose first. So find the one that's in the best position and then you can right click on it and align it. 